She's trying to give you kisses. It made me realise that actually we could cope with having another child. We didn't have to worry about anything. I don't understand why they didn't want anything from us. But the part of they wanted us to be happy. Just being able to sit and take a breath and just think, Eden's cared for, he's fine. Because I think you lose your own identity with a disabled child because you are that nurse 24-7. This is Eden. Eden is one of 49,000 children in the UK with a life-limiting or life-threatening medical condition. At seven years old, Eden has a large developmental delay and health issues due to a rare genetic condition. Eden requires 24-7 awake care. He has problems with apneas, which means that he will stop breathing. Alongside that, he has severe brittle bones, and it's not the type of brittle bones where you might have a trauma and that would cause the fracture. It's caused by um, the pressure of his own weight on his body. So the weight of his head on his spine has caused vertebral compression fractures. Eden has a considerable amount of pain. He has paracetamol regularly uh, throughout the day. He is unable to take non-steroidal anti inflammatories so his next port of call is Oromorph uh, which is a strong opiate medication um, but this has been a lifesaver. Beginning his life without a diagnosis mum Sasha struggled to cope having such a poorly child. She was referred to her local children's hospice when Eden was a year old. Uh, we were at a point where the family was in crisis. I had a breakdown to his consultant and they advised us that we were entitled to some support with care. Not knowing about the services that Julius House Hospice offered, um, it was scary. Um, we thought that hospice was for children that were imminently dying. We didn't know that they offered children's services. Hospices have sensory rooms, hydrotherapy pools and offer a safe space for parents to bond with their child. The hospice taught Eden how to play, even with a severe sensory disorder. It took us some time to really have it sink in that our child was going to need a hospice. Um, we really realised quickly how much he enjoyed going there and how much stimulus they could provide that we couldn't at home. The hospice really turned their life around. The support offered from other parents and members of staff means Eden now attends a specialist school and Sasha can look to the future despite Eden's disabilities. Very early on, we thought that he would pass early and we'd planned a funeral and everything around him was quite negative, but hospices actually put a positive spin on things. There are 53 children's hospices in the UK offering medical support, palliative care, bereavement counselling and activities for families and children. Having a safe space to interact with people who can understand the daily challenges is really important to reduce isolation. It's about being able to talk about the death and the dying of their child. There aren't many other organisations that really deal with that. I mean, there are other short break charities for disabled children, but none that have that specialised um, expertise around end of life care and bereavement. Um, lots of the children's hospitals provide a sort of cold room for the child's body after they've died um, and support for the family around that kind of thing. So that's a very unique thing that hospices do. Like many children, Nikki's daughter Jade only had a short life. Dying at the age of 11, Nikki keeps Jade's ashes close to her heart in a special necklace, grateful that the hospice made the heartbreak easier. We transferred her from hospital to Naomi House and they looked after her there until she passed away. Um, and she, she was in my arms, in a bed, in a child's bedroom, not in a clinical hospital. And we weren't surrounded by doctors, we were surrounded by family. To be able to stay there and still be able to visit her when I wanted to, and they guided me through the process of organising the funeral, of, of getting her her death registered, which I wouldn't have known where to start. I wouldn't have had a clue. She was born with a genetic abnormality um, that no one had ever seen before. So she spent eight weeks in newborn intensive care unit and throughout her life we learnt more and more about her disabilities. Um, she became oxygen dependent at about a year old. She was deaf, she was visually impaired. Um, Throughout her life, she was completely tube fed, ep epileptic. Um, she had a small hole in her heart, a small cyst in her brain, 
um, and a global developmental delay. Jade attended Naomi House and Jack's place, a hospice that looks after 325 children and young adults. Using the hospice for respite, Nikki is one of the many parents who felt the pressure of being a full-time carer lifted when she went. When we were there, I was able to just be mummy, to just be able to play with Jade, interact with her as a, as a parent. And when I came home, I was better able to cope with dealing with day to day, with the, the hospital appointments, the, the, the fact that she could become very poorly in a, in a very short space of time. Nikki used the hospice for emergency respite in hard times. If Jade had been poorly or something else was going on in our lives, like when my husband was sent to Afghanistan and I struggled to cope, I could phone them up and if they had space, they'd give us some emergency respite as well and support. Um, but they also took her for a period of 10 days at one stage so that Lee and I could go on our honeymoon. Um, and that was the only way that we would have been able to do that. Obviously with Jade having a life-limiting condition, it was really important to us that she be able to be at our wedding. Um, and not knowing at the time how close we were to losing her um, makes it even more special now looking back at these, these memories and thinking how precious it was to have her there. And she actually walked down the aisle as well in her walking frame, which was something we never thought she'd do. Um, amazing day. Hospices support families through all stages of their child's life. Dedicated palliative care teams work to make the final moments as peaceful as possible for everyone involved. We always take the lead from the parents. Um, it, this is, as you can imagine, about the worst thing that can befall any parent. And for some parents, um, it's really hard to even accept. When we get to that stage, parents need not to be caring for their child. Some want to do that, but most will just want to simply be with them, to spend every conceivable moment of their time just with them. To be able to stay with their baby is something Jackie and her partner Wayne will be forever grateful for. Arriving at Chestnut Treehouse Hospice at only eight days old, their daughter Melody passed away the day she arrived. The family were able to stay with Melody in her place of rest for a week until they felt able to go home. They now have a stone in the memorial garden to remember her. She had left side in some prison, so her left side of her heart didn't work. We turned up here, you just think maybe there's a, they can fix her. They can do something, they can check, fix her heart, which they couldn't. But to all the people on TV that, that it happened, people got over it and got better. They got one or two heart transplants, why couldn't they do that to Melody? Because it was too, too intense, too, because she was born six weeks early, they, had no, they couldn't fix it. Consumed by the sadness of losing a child, Chestnut Tree House Hospice did everything they could for the family. From childcare and making dinner, to arranging the funeral and adding her name to a memorial book. We didn't have to worry about anything. I didn't understand why they didn't want anything from us, but the part from they wanted us to be happy. They understand that you shouldn't bury a ch bur child, but they're there to help if you need them to. But yeah, she didn't make a noise, which I did at one, one point I wanted to hear her cry, but I'm glad she didn't, because I would have been in my head for the rest of my life. I would be able to think about that from day one, which luckily enough she didn't. So in my head, she, she died peacefully. The family all received bereavement counselling, and now seven years on after losing Melody, they still visit the hospice for Memorial Days. A place that helps you make memories is so important when you know your child will only have a short life. We love the place. It's still part of our family. And it'll never change, I don't think. The change in our family and the support our family can give each other, and it, it's just, it's amazing. Seeing other families who use Naomi House with the children coming in needing special care and all their siblings made me realise that actually we could cope with having another child and so Logan and Harrison will grow up as well knowing that Jade's in the stars and if they want to talk to her they, they can talk to her anytime they want to and Logan often does.